Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's uh, weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and then it is posted to our um, archive webpage for you to watch later um, at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you at the end of <coughs> excuse me at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live shows and the recordings uh, in the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have at Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you who've not been here before or don't know about the Nebraska Library Commission, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we uh, be similar to your state library um, if you're not from Nebraska. So we provide services and training and resources to all all types of libraries in the state so you will find shows on encompass live uh, for all types of libraries uh, public academic k-12 corrections museums archives historical societies <clears throat> anything and everything really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries um, we do book reviews interviews mini training sessions <clears throat> excuse me uh, demos of services and products all sorts of things uh, we have guest speakers that come on sometimes, and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that uh, come on the show. And today we have hopefully a mixture of that. <laughs> um, we have with us right now um, from the Nebraska Library Commission, um, uh, Tessa, uh, who is our communications coordinator. That's the title, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is Deborah as our communications coordinator, um, and hopefully we'll be joined um, once um, she gets there. She's had another appointment for this from um, with um, Becky Faber, who's one of our Nebraska Center for the Book Board members, correct? Yes, okay. and she's also, um, I think, heads of the committee for the One Book, One Nebraska program. Oh, perfect, yes. So hopefully she'll join us um, when she gets here. So. Um, I will just hand it over to you, Tessa, I think, to uh, take it away and tell us about what's going on with this year's uh, new One Book, One Nebraska program. Yeah. Well, like Krista said, my name is Tessa Timperley, and I'm the communications coordinator with the Nebraska Library Commission. I get to work with the Center for the Book board on a lot of their programs, and I help facilitate those programs through the Library Commission since we work hand in hand on a lot of those programs, um, including the One Book, One Nebraska. So this year, 2024, is our 20th year of the One Book, One Nebraska right. program. Celebrate. So, yeah, um, it's hard to believe. I haven't been around for the whole 20 years of it, but Becky has. So I'm interested to hear her talk about that when she gets on. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great collection of books and we'll talk about that in a little bit. This year's book is Dancing with the Octopus, A Memoir of a Crime by Deborah Harding. And it is a nonfiction book, obviously. I hope you know that from memoir. But it talks all about um, her experience growing up in Nebraska, being the victim of a terrible crime, and then how her family goes on to deal with that. So. We'll move on. We'll just talk about the One Book, One Nebraska program briefly. It's a program that we do every single year. It encourages Nebraskans to read the same book and then have discussions about that book. It hopefully brings up conversation and connection and we like it to be written by a Nebraskan or have a Nebraska theme or setting. So that's usually our criteria for picking a book. The committee for the Nebraska Center for the Book um, selects a title from lists that are nominated by Nebraskans all across the state. And so if you're listening to this, you can nominate a book and we'll go over how to do that a little later in the webinar. But as long as it's either written by a Nebraskan about Nebraska or is set in Nebraska, um, it's eligible. So one thing to note, it is an adult book program. So Mm -hmm. While there are a lot of amazing children's books out there written by Nebraskans um, and young adult books, we do gear this towards adults. So just make sure your book meets those 
qualifications. But yeah, we we love getting submissions. And we do have, um, so this particular program is for adults, but we do have a one book for Nebraska teens and um, children's uh, program as well. Right. So um, if you are looking for uh, those, kind, those kind of books, um, that great, that level of book for a one book program of any sort, um, you can look at our website for that one book for Nebraska kids, kids, one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens. Yeah. Yes, we do separate those out. I think, yeah. you know, people who are 15, 16, 17 aren't going to read the same book as somebody who's 10 or nine. So we, yeah, we have a little more variety there. And those aren't even necessarily Nebraska themed books. We just pick a great book that um, I say we, Sally Snyder and I believe Amy Owens pick books that they feel have a lot of value for kids to read. Sally so Snyder, that they can go coordinator of youth and, and uh, coordinator of young adult and youth services here at the library commission. Yep. She yeah. A lot of expertise in that area. They also include, um, and we can look at that website, um, but they include things for kids to do activities like puzzles that relate to the book, discussion questions, um, the author's websites, and anything like that that a um, youth librarian or a teacher might want to use to help facilitate discussion about those books. But the One Book, One Nebraska program for adults is sponsored by the Nebraska Center for the Book, Humanities Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission, and our regional library systems. So they all kind of play, play a part in how this program unfolds. And here you can see a list of all the books that we've featured and have been selected for the One Book, One Nebraska programming. They are widely varied. We've got fiction, nonfiction, we've got um, poetry in there. We have books that were written, um, you know, decades ago by Nebraska greats like Willa Cather, but we also have contemporary fiction and nonfiction in there as well. So it's, it's just all across the board, anything, and they all meet those requirements of a Nebraska theme or setting or written by a Nebraska author. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if anybody has any questions as we're going along, feel free to type them in the chat and Krista will throw those out as we get them. So this year's book is Dancing with the Octopus. And it is, if you haven't read it yet, um, it's a memoir of native Nebraskan Deborah Harding. She was born and grew up in Nebraska. And she, I don't wanna give too much away, but it is, she is assaulted as a 14 year old, I believe. And, and then most of the book is about the aftermath of that, how it affects her family, how it affects her and those around her and how they dealt with it or in some cases didn't deal with it. And um, later as an adult, she decides to go back and confront or meet her attacker while he's in prison and up for parole. So it's, it's a very, um, I'm not sure how to describe, I don't want to say it's a hard book to read, but it is, it does cover some very difficult topics. So there is sort of a warning in there for anybody reading that it does cover sexual assault. It covers um, depression, PTSD. Um, so all those, those very difficult topics. So it, it's not a light book to read, but mm -hmm. It has been described, so comparable authors would be The Glass Castle or um, Educated by Tara Westover. It's definitely something that you'd want to, if you're gonna use this in a, in a book group of any sort to give more, you know, have a discussion yeah. about it ahead of time in some way, um, mm -hmm. or, you know, give a warnings that this is, um, you know, has some difficult topics and it may not be the best um, book for some people, depending on their own personal history um, with situations like this. Yes. Um, but for some people, it may be a good thing to read and they've, if they've been in that kind of situation. That, you know, you just never know where people are at um, 
with those kind of incidents they've had in, in their lives, if they're ready to themselves, like um, the author did, uh, confront the situation, work through, deal with it, whatever they need to do. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we do have a comment um, from um, oh, yeah. Jen Norton, who's from our Lexington Public Library, says one of the book clubs at the Lexington Public Library is currently reading it, and they meet on April 23rd to discuss. So that's, that's great. The, yeah, great. I'm glad to hear some but libraries using it. Yeah. If you are at all familiar with our book club kits, you know McKinsey, and they, I was just talking about to them yesterday, and they said we are, we have lots of bookings, and it's very popular with our book club kits, so it's been going out a lot, and we're, we're excited to hear that and see what people think of the book. Right, right. So if you need to have a book club and you want to have a group of people read this, you don't have to go out and purchase or um, interlibrary loan like a whole bunch of copies of it. You can just get a, select, a set of them from us. And do we offer also set up these with each of the systems too? They have their own yeah. kit too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have a very large book club kit for this and I believe we send a few out at a time, but we all, depending on the size of the book club kit, book clubs, that are reading at the time. And then each system also has a collection of, I believe, 10 books. That So okay. if we're all booked up, you could check with your system. One of the four regional library systems here in Nebraska that we have. Um, for those of you not from Nebraska, we have four, or we split the split state up into four regions. Um, southeast in the southeast corner of the state, western the western, um, uh, Three Rivers is our northeast, and then pretty much down the center, as a Central Plains library system, and um, they each they work with us here at the Library Commission on all sorts of programs and services, and um, they have their own book club um, kits that they can send out of all sorts of titles, and we always make sure they get provided with um, sets for this, um, and we've started doing for the kids and teens books as well, um, to try and get more of those out, uh, and to anybody who wants to do those kind of um, book clubs. I was also just going to look up, um, I know we have this available to our talking book and braille readers as well. So oh, if you are a part of our talking book program, or if you have somebody in your library or community that um, can't read a physical book anymore for either physical reasons or their eyesight or anything like that, they can join our talking book and braille program and this book is available on demand from our barn services or cartridge i believe we also have it available as an ebook um, and an audiobook with nebraska um, overdrive libraries mm -hmm. so you can lots of different ways you can access this book um, we like to make sure that we can get it out there to anybody who is interested, whether they love ebooks or audiobooks, or they love to get a physical book like the book club kits. Mm -hmm. Any to anything is reading, any type of <laughs> format doesn't matter. Reading is reading. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So um, with that in mind, we've talked about this a little bit, but there are lots of ways you can get involved with the program. Um, we've talked about our book club kits. We also have a website um, dedicated to each year of the One Book, One Nebraska program that has lots of information. And we have a Get Involved page, and I'm gonna actually switch over to that. Yeah, yeah, we can look at the website. So on our website, we talk a little bit more about the book, and it has a lot of great information about the One Book program, but the book itself, we have um, copyright information as well as um, links to how you can get the book and reviews on what other people have thought about it so that you can have a little more information going into your book club um, to be able to talk about what this book is about before you guys have a chance to read it. We have an author page that talks about Deborah Harding. And then we have our Get Involved page where you can try to find a book, whether it's just at your public library or you wanna borrow a book club kit from us or your regional library system. We have all those links here. We also have the 
Nebraska Overdrive and the Talking Book and Bard link. So we have a lot of great options. We have our discussion questions. The, the author um, wrote discussion questions for their book and they have it posted either here on our website or we have a PDF link to it as well that you can access if you just wanna print that off. We have some options for, if you wanna have a speaker come in after your book club talks about it, we have some options in there. The author herself is not available for programming, but through Humanities Nebraska, you can get a speaker's grant and we kind of geared this towards memoirs in general and thinking about writing your own story. So we have a program by Twyla Hansen um, about writing and about writing um, on from the plane. So looking at your own environment and what you're writing about. And then we have one by Karen Gettert Shoemaker, who is a past One Book, One Nebraska author. And she also wrote a family history uh, non fiction, nonfiction book. I'm not sure how we describe that. It is inspired by her own family story, but I do believe she had to do some fiction writing in there too, just because she didn't have a first firsthand account of it. But right. it is, um, so talking about just writing your own story though, and how how that works. So those are great presentations. They're both amazing authors trial is a poet um so we really encourage you to access that if you have the opportunity with your book club group mm -hmm. yeah we and also that's have, and you mentioned oh, that our, this particular author is not available but and it varies from year to year depending on the authors and what they have going on and um how they are working with their books and also you know speaking of like some things like um oh uh Look, yeah, they if they're alive or not. <laughs> um, that's also something. Um, but we also if um, have had if there are like organizations involved with their particular book, like with Willa Cather, with the Cather, there's the Willa Cather Foundation or whatever. You know, those kind of things we might um, work with to do some programming or something. So um, uh, we do whatever we can to find you know a group or someone who would be able to speak and you know to make it more than just read a book and talk about it. <laughs> Exactly, yes. And with the idea of a memoir, we just wanted to get across that, you know, you don't have to be a published author to think about writing down your own story or your family's story. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to encourage, you know, people to, to write and yeah, get involved in how that might work. And uh, Becky has just joined us. Hello, Becky. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm going to finish talking about how they can get involved, but then I might let Becky talk a little bit about um, the One Book, One Nebraska um, and its 20th anniversary and how, how many good. books we've had in the past, that sort of thing. Um, so another way you can be a part of this is we would love to hear back from you about the book after you've read it. So we have program leader and participant um, evaluations. We would love to have you fill out. They're not very long, um, but just telling us what you think about the book, what you think about the One Book, One Nebraska program. It helps us know what we're getting right and what we could do a little bit better. And we also have an option for sending us a book review so we can let, like I, like you all know, reading a book review before you pick up a book can be helpful to know if it's something you would be interested in. So if you would feel moved to write a book review for us, we would love that. All right, Becky, I might hand it over to you so you can talk about One Book, One Nebraska and its 20th year. Well, that is such an exciting thing to think about that this program has already a 20 year history because we have explored such a wide variety of books. And um, in 2005, when the Cather Foundation worked with the Center for the Book on establishing a One Book, One Nebraska program, it was successful 
from the start. And Rod Wagner was telling me that um, during that first year that already people were asking, what, what do you think the next book will be? Um, you know, what should we read next? And it's, I feel like in some ways I'm, I'm kind of a steward of this program because I've been on the selection committee for several years. But it is exciting to see people's curiosity in terms of what's coming next, to see their enthusiasm to, uh, you know, nominate books. And we, we just encourage the nomination. Uh, it is a long process. The cutoff date for nominating is June 15th. And then it takes almost three months for the um, committee to read through the nominations and consider, move forward. Uh, we end up with a short list somewhere around the middle of September and then um, move toward promoting this short list to the board as a whole and um, then coming up with our selection. But I think one thing that's so enlightening for me was in 2019, we did a joint one book with Iowa, right? And that's my home state. So it was interesting for me to see how they chose theirs. And they do not use the same um, criteria that we use. In other words, it doesn't have to have um, a topic, a theme, a location uh, that takes place within the state or even that the author has a connection to the state. So in, in that year's worth of book selection, it really made me appreciate the way that we have been able to showcase the books that have an affiliation with the state of Nebraska. And I have the list of the 20 books in front of me and we have done the uh, traditional Nebraska authors that one might expect with Willa Cather and Mari Sandoz, Best Streeter Aldrich, Wright Morris. Um, and then John we, <laughs> John Neidhart, yes. Uh, and then we come back to uh, works that maybe have authors that not everyone has heard of. And we have been fortunate to have authors who are living authors. Um, some of those authors have been able to come out and make their way through different parts of the state to be able to talk about the book. So for me, when I look at the list of the 20 books, I see such a variety and yet in every way they represent something about the state of Nebraska. And I think that's just, it's an excitement and it's one that will continue to grow. Yeah, I do like that we we promote not just the most popular book, but um, books that maybe Nebraskans didn't even know were out there about their state or by authors they had never heard of. And yeah, it's just very engaging in that way. And it gives us a chance to highlight a book and an author that maybe people wouldn't have been familiar with otherwise. And I think the key to that always comes down to we cannot select a book if it's not nominated. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, um, we maybe would not have thought about Once Upon a Town, whose author, Bob Green, uh, does not live in Nebraska. It was a fabulous success. People still talk with me about how much they love that book, but yeah. we never would have chosen it if someone hadn't nominated it. Uh, it's not the committee or the Center for the Book Board that makes this decision. Their decision is only based on the fact that certain books are nominated. And, um, and that's that's just a great part of this process because someone somewhere says, wow, I really like this book. I think it would make a great one book, one Nebraska. 
and then we go there from there with the nominations. Yeah, I agree. We also have had just tremendous energy with people doing programs. And um, I think about how many trips around the state Joe Starita made in mm -hmm. 2012 with I Am A Man. And oh, yeah. so in 2016, Karen Shoemaker, I have no idea how many miles <laughs> she put on her car that year. She spoke to everyone. Um, and then, you know, the pandemic, which slowed us down, uh, and particularly in 2020 with uh, Donald Stratton's All the Gallant Men. Uh, but then the next year, 2021, Jim Kimball is coming back from New Jersey and doing all kinds of programs with Prairie Forge and Jonas Agee as well with The Bones of Paradise. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the level of excitement with this program is not just in the books, but also with the programming that goes with it. I, yeah, I like that it's so varied that you can have the author or if the author is not available, um, we've been able to pro, um, partner with Humanities Nebraska and have a speaker that has um, some academic knowledge like last year with Rick Seitbert and he was able to record some some videos for us that we could post about um, Mignon Eberhardt. So you just never know with the book what you might get with it. So that's always exciting too. And I think um, this year with Dancing with the Octopus, there are so many themes in that book that while we have an author, a living author who lives farther away than any living author that we've worked with. The themes in the book are so um, varied that we would find not only perhaps through the speaker series, but also in communities. There are people who are trained and experienced in dealing with PTSD or grief. Um, or who understand uh, violence against women, They're, the themes in here are, are not difficult to reach for in terms of finding specific uh, experienced people, people who work professionally to discuss these issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. If you if you have ideas or you've had a particularly successful um, programming around Dancing with the Octopus or you have questions, we would love for you to share them with us on our Facebook page. We have a One Book, One Nebraska specific Facebook page where people can engage with each other who have read the book um, across book club kits, across this book club groups across the state. So we really encourage that. And just to kind of keep the conversation going about the book and share your ideas, your thoughts, what your book club was thinking or how they felt. So we would love to have that sort of um, conversation on our Facebook page. And that's available um, just on Facebook. We've also, we talked about this a little bit already, but um, we have bookmarks available. We have reader surveys and program surveys available and discussion questions. If you, if you would like hard copies, just let us know. We can send those out with your book club kits. If you have social media posts you're putting out about your book club reading group, um, we can give, get you graphics for that as well. One thing that's a little different this year than in the past is our how we're celebrating at the end of the year. We usually have a book award ceremony where we have a One Book, One Nebraska presentation, and then we announce the next year's book. And we're still going to do that, but it's going to be in a little different um, type of program. We are combining forces with the Nebraska Book Festival this year to have one big joint event that happens on October 12th. It will be at the UNL um, City Campus Union. And 
it will be a day long event. I believe it starts in the morning around, I think 10 and then we'll go and be finished with the normal book awards presentation and authors and then the final announcement of the 2025 one book one nebraska selection will follow so stay tuned for more information about the nebraska celebration of books we don't have all the details pinned down yet but it's it's shaping up to be a very exciting event you can find more information about it if i can get there on the Nebraska Center for the Book webpage. Under the Nebraska, the celebration of the Nebraska book, um, we have more information about that event and we'll continue to add to that as we find out more and get more planned. But we have some tentative information on the website right now. One thing that um, specifically for One Book, One Nebraska, we're going to have a multi-author panel with past authors nice. talking about their experience being One Book, One Nebraska authors and um, the events they did and what that looked like for them as authors. So that will be exciting. We will also have a memoir writing workshop with um, the Lark Song Writers Place. They are going to facilitate that. So, so we have a lot of events that are One Book, One Nebraska themed this year, and that should be very exciting. It's nice to do something special because it's the 20th anniversary, yeah. <laughs> yes. Becky talked about this a little bit. You can nominate a book year round for One Book, One Nebraska. We just mm -hmm. cut off that the next year's book on June 15th, like Becky said. And then if you nominate on June 16th, it will be for the next year's nomination process. But you can go in and fill out this very simple form. Um, we just want the book title, the author's name, your email, and then any comments you have about the book. And then we just wanna know if it meets any of the criteria of, is it a Nebraska author, a Nebraska setting, and is it currently in print? So we have a link down here at the bottom you can also find the link on the Nebraska Center for the Book um, webpage. It's under our nominations page, but very simple. And we just, like Becky has said, we can't have a book be selected if it hasn't been nominated first. So take a look at the list of previous books. And if you don't see a book on there that you are just wild about and think would make an excellent title, please nominate it. Um, we only need to nominate it once. Multiple nominations don't hold any weight. They read every book that's nominated. So one nomination and it's on the list, that's fine. You can nominate multiple books. So you don't. it's not just fill out one form and then you're done for the year. You can nominate as many books as you think are worthy. And you, you can nominate in, the, in a future year if yours doesn't get picked. Yes. That's thing too, like if they nominate a book before the June cutoff date for 2025 um, and it doesn't get picked, then if they want it to be for 2026, they'd have to do a new nomination after June. Yes. Yeah. That's what, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're correct. So the previous ones, we don't keep all the old ones. It's for, it's like a one year at a time gathering That's of right. titles. Yeah. Yes. Becky, do you have any other comments about nominating? Uh, as I said earlier, we develop a short list, <clears throat> excuse me, which is usually four or five books. And so that short list is always publicized. And if you saw a book on the short list that you thought, wow i think that would be fabulous but it's not the one that's selected please you know nominate it it uh, obviously carried enough weight that it brought the readers to put it on the short list and we've had books that have been nominated you know two or three or maybe even more times um, and it 
It doesn't matter if it's been nominated before. As was said, we read every book that's nominated. Yeah, this just might be its year, so. Yeah, we, we have no way of knowing um, how many books will be nominated and we have no way of knowing, let's say if 45 books are nominated and out of those 45, we have 18 that are duplications, then you, you know, you can see mathematically it drops the number that we consider, but we're, we're reading all of them and giving all of them feedback. Every book is read by more than one reader. In our process, um, we're usually starting with, say, three readers for, for every book. Um, as I say, it's an extensive process, and we um, are always asking the readers for feedback so that we can get a, um, an idea of how the book works with readers. So this, somebody, we do have a question that wants to know how can they, you, know, you talk about not just nominating the books that anyone can do that, but what if someone wants to help with um, the reading, you know, becoming more involved and in actually being one of the, on the selection committee or one of the readers? The readers are members of the selection committee. They're board members from the Nebraska Center for the Book. Okay. So if you were very interested in being involved in the behind the scenes of the Nebraska Library Commission, or not the Nebraska Library Commission, the Center for the Book and the One Book, One Nebraska program, um, you would need to join the Nebraska Center for the Book and be a member. And then, um, yeah, from there, Becky, yeah, you, ha you have to be on the board. You can't be on a committee for the One Book, One Nebraska. The Center for the Book board has a number of different committees mm -hmm. and um, a person has to be a member of the committee for the reading committee for One Book, One Nebraska. And we try with our members to, um, you know, spread out what their duties are so that no one is just overwhelmed by any one particular thing because we have other projects right um, for example the letters about literature and uh, then we also have um, you know positions on the board officers on the board so we're trying not to put an undue hardship on anyone because these obviously when you're on the board it's a, it's a volunteer effort but yes we you know, we always need people on the board and um, always welcome new faces, new voices. Yeah, so if you if you are really passionate about this, you can join the Center for the Book. It's mm -hmm. not expensive. I think it's, you can see right here, membership. It's $20 for an individual and it is $30 for an organization. And then you can look into joining the One Book, One Nebraska committee. So well, you we to, would welcome you have to be a board membership. member, not just a member of the Center for the Book, but you have to be a board member. You have to be elected to the board. To, to be a part of the committee? Yes. Oh, okay. But yeah, the first step is becoming a member. And then from there, you can see everything you can be involved in. And we, we love to have a dynamic on the board that represents um, the breadth of the state of Nebraska and varying backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it just, it makes the readership uh, so much more diverse and, and consequently the, the feedback and the interest more diverse. Mm-hmm, yeah. So if you have questions about joining the Center for the Book, you can contact us. Um, our contact information is down here at the bottom, 
or you'll see my contact information at the end of this slideshow and you can contact me directly. But once again, we would love to have you nominate books and let us know what you think we should be reading for One Book, One Nebraska. And then here's that um, slide with my contact information, my email and my phone number, as well as the One Book, One Nebraska website um, link so that you can see what's out there. Do we have any more questions, Krista? Um, yeah, not right now. Is anybody, um, yeah, because we got, <clears throat> I still got about 15 minutes of the show here time. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts about um, the program? Uh, anything else you want to know about it? Um, more information you need? Um, anything you want to share? We just have, we did have one library, Lexington Public Library is currently reading it and are meeting next Tuesday to do for their, yeah, Tuesday, April 23rd to discuss. Um, does anyone else um, already have programs and things set up? We'd love to know about it. You can type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, or if you have any um, memories or anything about any of the previous titles that were, um, you know, as you said, this is the 20th year. So um, big, big year for 20 years of it. That's just amazing, I think. <laughs> um, and this is a program that goes on in all sorts of, in many states do a one book or, or cities do there's a one book one lincoln one book one omaha um some schools do them as well uh, i know I've, I've seen that where schools uh, k-12 schools have done a one book one school <laughs> um mm -hmm. program like this where everyone reads the same title and discusses it we did talk a little bit about um one book one nebraska kids and teens. So I just wanted to show you that mm -hmm. page is a part of our One Book, One Nebraska 2024 page. And we do have book club kits that go along with these books as well. So mm -hmm. it's not, book club kits aren't just for the adult book. They are also for our kids and teens books. So that's available. If you have a, a teen or um, student book club that you are looking for books, we have mm -hmm. kids books and YA books available in the book club kit collection. Yeah, and I'm trying to I'm trying to remember if we did already. Three. Okay. Um, yes, I was just looking at our um, archives for Encompass Live. Um, we usually, you know, we're doing um, today's show is about the One Book, One Nebraska um, program, but we do also usually um, try to do sessions about one book for Nebraska kids and teens. Um, and we um, haven't done the one yet for 2024, so um, we will have that coming up. I've got to get with Sally Snyder on a date when um, she's available for that. But as Tessa already showed you, all the information is out there. Um, on the website already. Um, this is all decided, you know, the year before for the upcoming year, so that you know what the um, books are that you can read for your um, adults um, for Dancing with the Octopus or the um, kids and teens book um, titles. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions or comments coming in yet while we've been uh, discussing and chatting about this. So um, I do have one uh, comment, Krista, something that oh, just yeah. occurred to me. Um, in 2015, our One Book, One Nebraska was Death Zones and Darling Spies, Seven Years of Vietnam Reporting by Beverly Deep Kiever. Mm -hmm. who was uh, born and raised in Nebraska and uh, the longest serving journalist uh, embedded in the war zone in Vietnam during the war. And um, she was in Nebraska a few months ago. Uh, and because she is coordinating with the School of Journalism, and she is making, she's involved in the making of a documentary 
nice. that has to do with um, um, a Nebraskan service during the Vietnam War. And I don't know how that's moving along. That's something that I need to check on. Uh, but it's this documentary will be something that down the road, um, maybe in the next couple of years, will be available uh, for people to view as well. And uh, Ms. Kiever is still alive. She lives in Hawaii. She's still very active. Um, and I think... I just saw a snippet of the documentary. I think it's going to be very powerful. Hmm. Well, that is exciting. It's good. So I'm glad we're going to have, like you said, the Tessa at the celebration, checking in with some of the previous ones. It's always, you always wonder what's happened to them since, you know, for that. Well, obviously the authors that are still alive <laughs> and you know, how things are going for them and, and everything. So it's good that we'll get to check back in with them. Um, and we should mention too, um, so talking about the previous ones, you know, each year we do the, the one book for each the year and do the book kits for that, book club kits. But um, once the year is over, those kits are still available too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're picking one book, you know, for a particular year and never create it, but you can always go back to a previous year and look and um, order a, a book club kit for one of the previous ones as well. We don't um, remove them from our collection. Um, if anything, and you, you could, you know, Lisa Kelly, I had a reference and um, Mackenzie can attest to this. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, our book club kit program. <laughs> um, I think they've broke a thousand titles in it now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is just, this is this year's, but you're, please do go back and, you know, discuss any of the previous ones too and order the, get the book club kits from us. And someone did just comment while we're talking uh, that they said, I just ordered, um, this is Tony Krause at uh, Shelton said, I just ordered a copy of Dancing with the Octopus. Thank you, Chris, Tessa and Krista and Becky. Great. <laughs> Yeah, we love to hear it. Yeah, yeah. what a great opportunity when that um, documentary comes out to go back and reread um, Death Zones and Darling Spies yeah. to go with it. So that would be a really great idea. And I will, I'll check on that and see how that's coming along. Um, and so that I can report back to you and let you know how that uh, is progressing. And also in early June at the annual Cather Spring Conference, mm -hmm. I will be doing a presentation on Nebraska's One Book, One Nebraska, and how it kicked off with My Antonia in 2005, mm -hmm. um, and then exploring how um, the, the program has grown. Yeah, that sounds great. We'll have to get that on the calendar. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly which day I am doing the presentation because the full conference schedule wasn't up, but Tessa, I'll be letting you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't see any other questions coming in, um, but you do have Tessa's contact information, everyone, or just going to the you know, Nebraska Center for the Book website to reach out to them about the program. Um, reach out to us here at the commission if you want to order book club kits for it. Of all the information is on the website, and share what you're doing. You know, report. Let us know so we can put it on our calendar so we know what's um, happening around the state with discussing the book this year. All right. Um, any last words, uh, Becky and Tessa, before I pull? Um, Oh, someone, okay, comment just comes in. Of course, as soon as I say we're done, <laughs> someone comes in and says, I have listened to the archived One Book, One Nebraska, the recordings, previous recordings of our show here, I assume she's talking about, and I found them very interesting. Well, thank you. We hope so. Um, like I said, sometimes we're able to get the author with us, depending on if they're alive or not and or available. Um, and sometimes, um, sometimes it's just us. <laughs> well, and I think that uh, Dancing with the Octopus, I, I would love to be able to have Deborah Harding here, but the limitation of her living in England and then also um, the fact that she lost one of her children a few years ago, I think that for mm -hmm. her to make this trip and then have that discussion would probably be very emotionally taxing. But there's so much richness in this book. Um, and it's, I, I really liked that she 
wrote out of sequence that the sections are short so that if they're emotionally strong, you have a little breathing room uh, to go on. But I know we have so many trained professionals, uh, people who are well-skilled to talk about the issues that are in this book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely an important topic and an important book, I think, yeah. All right, um, I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen so I can do my little wrap up here for the show. There it is. Um, so yeah, so thank you everyone for being here. Thanks Tessa and um, Becky for um, getting here. We've got some thank yous coming in from people. Um, as I said, we do this every year, the One Book on Nebraska, we try and get it on Encompass Live every year so we can have a, a, um, a recording and discussion about it here. Uh, so you can share this with anyone um, who may be interested in this year's title. So, and here on the event page for today's show, we have a link to One Book on Nebraska and Nebraska Center for the Book, Humanities Nebraska, Library Commission, um, and the Celebration of Nebraska Books. So you can always pop here to um, get to all those pages as well. Um, going back to my Encompass Live page here, um, I mentioned the show is, reco is recorded, as it always is, and the recording will be available, should be by the end of the day tomorrow, um, here on our archive page. We have our upcoming shows here, and yes, I'll have more coming, filling in on May. Um, I've been on vacation the last two weeks, so <laughs> I'm catching up on things still. Um, so our archives will go here. Um, so we did have the show the last two weeks, but I have not got the recordings up yet. I'm working on them. So you'll see the two last two weeks come up here and then today's, um, I hope to have them all done and, and edited up by the end of this week. Uh, so you'll have, um, yeah, I'm just checking on my calendar here. <laughs> yes, the last one we had, we did was um, March 20th. Um, we usually, March 27th was the last Wednesday of March, um, that one we um, had to last minute have a cancellation of that one, um, but we have the last two weeks will be available in today's, will be here on our archive page. And uh, you can look here to see, as, as someone mentioned, we listened to our previous One Book, One Nebraska um, topics. You can search our show archives here. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months. Um, that is because this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered. And I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because it's, it's a long, long list. Um, but the show premiered in January, 2009. So we have, we're in our 16th, we're only in our 16th year here. <laughs> um, 16 years of Encompass Live and all the recordings are here. Um, so just pay attention when you are watching an older show to the original broadcast date. Um, they all have a date here when they first were done. And um, some of the shows will be great to keep watching, um, stand the test of the time, have good, useful information, but some things will become old and outdated. Um, information and resources um, may have changed drastically, links may be broken, um, services and programs may not exist anymore. Um, people may work at a different library or a different organization than when they first um, brought, uh, spoke um, presented for us. So just pay attention to that date. But um, as we do in libraries, we keep things for historical purposes oftentimes. As long as we have a place to host all these, we will always have them available to you. Um, right now, these are all on our YouTube channel, the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel is where our, all our show archives go. Um, and we will also include with them if there is, uh, here's the previous one, oh, it only has a recording. Um, if there are slides, we add those, there we go, um, as well as slides or documentation. So um, we'll have a link to uh, Tessa's slides for today's. And I'll show you here, I just did a search earlier on for kids. And then here's the one from when we did the One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens 2023 um, a session. As I said, I'm gonna work on getting one for the 2024 titles available as well. So, but you can look at the previous ones if you want to as well. Um, yeah, back to the main income slide page. Okay. Um, we also have a Facebook page for the show. So if you do like to, um, if you do use Facebook, you can give us a like over there. We post reminders about the show. Here's a reminder to log in to today's show this morning, um, about previous shows, uh, when the recordings are available, I'll post on here as well. So you'll see a few posts coming up saying the recordings are available for the last couple of weeks when they are um, done. Um, we use the hashtag and come live elsewhere. Uh, we have a Twitter account for the Library Commission and um, Instagram. <laughs> so um, you may see other things posted there using the little abbreviated hashtag. We can keep an eye on things. Um, so here's the one book for Nebraska 
page and the 20, the kids and teens titles, Parachute Kids by Betty Tang and Between the Lines by Nikki Grimes are the um, kids and teens titles for 2024. All right, so that'll wrap up today. I hope you join us next week when it is the last Wednesday of the month, which means it's Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, and this was actually last month's um, Pretty Sweet Tech, um, but at the last minute, Amanda Sweet, she had to cancel. She had a last minute um, uh, conflict. And so we bumped it to this year, this month. Um, she attended comp the Computers and Libraries Conference in March, and she's gonna tell us all about it, um, things she learned, um, cool and interesting um, things that she came across at the conference. So you wanted to hear more about Computers and Libraries, an annual conference held in Washington, D.C. Um, sign up for um, next week's um, Pretty Sweet Tech. And then keep an eye on our calendar here. As I said, working on getting our dates filled in here. Every Wednesday we have a show um, and I'll be getting those added um, as I get things finalized and confirmed. Um, all right, any last minute words, Tessa, Becky? Join us for the celebration in October, October 12th. Yeah, let us know what you're doing with your one book, one Nebraska book club groups and how you enjoyed the book. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here this morning. And hope we will see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.